Hey, this is Brian with TACnet Productions, and in this video I'm going to explain how data comes from the database, goes to a server, or comes from the server, and appears on someone's browser. And then we're going to talk about a, a second way, how data is created from a person or the client is made it to the database and recorded. So by the end of this video, hopefully you get a quick overview on how data is transferred from client back to server. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the reason for this video is somebody asked me to visualize on how data makes it from the database all the way to a person's browser um, and vice versa. So the very first thing you need to understand is that there is a server, which is this guy right here. This will be um, owned by some company or, or whatever, you know, it could be what they call a virtual private server. So somebody owns a, a space on uh, a bunch, like a server farm, and they allocate you some space. So this could be... Um, Linode, this could be Firebase, this could be your own server, but you know, usually you hear Apache or CentOS or some kind of Linux server. Um, this is where your projects are going to live. And so when somebody's browser or if it's an app, um, you know, makes a request or, or tries to access it, it's actually accessing that server's IP, which actually lives on some kind of server box uh, hardware. So here I have marked this as your server. Technically, your app will actually live on this server sometimes too. So if it's a website, um, if, it, if it's a website for, for browser, let's go ahead and just make this as An outline just just to show that this this is where technically would be sent out to to here so the very first time a website someone's computer would make would make a um, a request it would it would actually send out this app that we're looking at over here and this could be like for like a standard website. So I'm just going to mimic it here. Just like this. So this is this is the standard website that that we're seeing over here. So the very the very first time put a logo, put some buttons. <laughs> but you get the idea. So the so the very first time the browser says, "Hey, I want to load this website." it will actually ask for it from the server and the server will send that website to someone's browser now that it's on someone's browser they're able to access it so this so this is the people over here and they're the ones actually interfacing with with the website so now that the browser is open there's technically nothing on this page except for what has already been coded in this app over here um, so th so this is HTML let's just say it's HTML and CSS technically there would probably be JavaScript as well right other than that, there it, it, let's just say it's templated. So to fill out these lines and to load these pictures because it's not included in this directory, what this browser would do is send it to this, ask the server, hey, I need this picture right here. Or let's say this is a video. I need this video right here and I want this picture over here and I need whatever text is going on here. 
So it'll, it'll ask the server, hey, please send me this stuff. And so whoever's the developer will, will know how to code this. So, so this is all, you know, to, to code this whole working framework, it's either one developer or it's a team of developers, but they're all in conjunction uh, together. The only other thing that would be in here is if there is a wall, because it's a third party, this is what an API would be and we can get into that another another time but so somebody would request it from the API the API would then come here and ask the server let's say it's a node it's a node application that's handling all the requests the the browser sends the request the node JS receives the request so this is an app that is fully coded that knows that the request is going to come in your database, um, let's say because this is Node.js, this is MongoDB, but it could be Postgres, it could be MySQL, it, it could be any kind of database that, that you want to work with. This server app, this Node.js app, knows exactly what functions as a developer um, and working with the developer docs of that database, how to do CRUD um, functions for for this database so it knows how to create so let's write CRUD over here right CRUD and that's what your database is is going to be holding all this data so come the data is requested comes into the node.js app the node.js app is programmed to handle the request and then the node.js app asks the database the database is on the server and it says hey i need to do something with this data and then it and then it updates the database with it but not only does it update the database with it um it will send it back so so the very first thing is is we were talking about asking for data so it'll ask that it'll ask the database hey give me give me this data the database will return the data in the row or table or the document that it has that now that the node.js app has the data from the database it will then send it back out of the server if it hits the API, it'll it'll you know give it to the API. But let's let's say the API is not here, it'll send it back to the person's browser. And then now that the browser has it, it'll then go ahead and load it where it needs to be loaded. So so that's that's requesting data. But let's say that you have forms or you have some kind of interactive app that somebody's creating themselves as a user or they're creating um, a widget or something in some kind of admin dashboard or even Trello, you know, can, Trello would be an example of something that people are creating. This person would be creating something here. Now, just because they create it here doesn't mean that it's only created here because if they log out, and they come back the next day and they reopen the browser, the browser doesn't have any idea that the, that the user just created something, right? Because there's no persistent data there. Um, you can cache things and you might be able to write to someone's, you know, actual hard disk, but that's not typical in how browsers functions and now even most apps don't really use a lot of hard disk uh you know hit, hitting someone's device with, with a bunch of hard disk data um you know it it is still done but the majority of pers of having persistent data is is it's communicated back to a server and housed there so anytime somebody comes back to their screen the next day they're going to go ahead and open their browser and whatever changes they made are going to be served to them or given to them from from the database and server app over on this side. Uh, let me switch back to um, 
I think you could see that better. I like the hand better, but it was down there. So somebody creates something on their browser over here. Now it's going to tell the server that, hey, I've just created some new data that this database has no idea about, but I know about it here. So after they create this data, they, they added in their, you know, their video and they created a, uh, an image down here they're going to then tell the tell the server that they just created something so that's that's where it's going to come through this line like so and it's going to tell this node app and say hey I just created this data this node app is expecting data to be created somehow because things can't get created unless this node app knows how to handle it and if this node app doesn't know how to handle it then you need to hit you need to go back in back into development and whatever developer needs to then code up some code to handle things being created and they need to know what's being created so if it's a video this node app needs to know that a video has been created so we can't just create videos and this thing's like oh you created a video Th this developer needs to know that videos can be created um, so when one is created it knows how to handle it so data is created over here sent to this node app the node app is like okay great now I'm gonna update the database with it and it goes through this line so now the database has new data that's created with whatever this dude or gal over here created and then usually the database says hey I've updated myself we're good to go and then node.js will send back to the browser and say um, I've I've successfully updated the database saying your request to me is okay I'm I'm doing good Usually those are 200 requests. So if some if you're sending data and you're you're doing things, anything in the 200s will be a success. Anything in the 400s will be an error. So th so these are your success messages back and these are your error messages back. Um, a lot of frameworks know how to handle this. So when Joe, when node, node will always be sending out a 200 or a 400, a 201, a 203, a 200 flat. Same with the 400. If you've ever seen a 404, that's an error. That, that means you're trying to access something that's not there. And the server saying, I know you're trying to make this request cause I'm saying, Hey, go, go to this, but the server saying I don't have that there's no file called you know um, person screenshot you know dot HTML that I, I don't I don't have that file or directory a 200 is gonna be returned saying um, yes th it was completed and the reason why these are returned from the node.js app so whoever's the developer will will you know if it's Ruby on Rails node.js you know PHP whatever Python they'll they have control over what's returned as well um, it's built out of the box on a lot of uh, HTTP request packages that would be added into a node.js app or any kind of server-side app but the developer can also return back they can actually set what's being returned so that way the whoever the developer on the browser is if if they get a 401 or you know some kind of some kind of timeout request this person this person over here doesn't think hey everything's good my data is there the developer who coded this will know oh i got a 400 something back i need to ask it again or i need to tell the user hey an error happened so that way some kind of pop up pops up and it says error you know, and and it, it'll say try again or could not submit your data. So the user doesn't think like, hey, I commit, I, I just created all this data and now nothing happened. The user can now say, oh, okay, well, 
let me check my internet, uh, I have a bad connection, or, you know, my file size was too large, you know, that it doesn't just, you know, there, there's got to be some kind of handling on this side. And the Node.js app is the one to tell the browser that something was successful or not successful. And then whoever the developer who coded the client side app is the one that then shows it to the user. So now this user can then see it and do some, you know, take, take a, take a necessary action. Sometimes some successes happen in the background and you never even know about it because it worked and you don't need to tell the user, Hey, your upload was correct. A lot of sometimes, you know, you, you just, you just expect it to happen. That's the difference between uh, UX experience. So UX, for, for those that you don't know, is called user experience. If we don't show this error message and it just fails and they have no idea, that's a bad user experience. That's, that's not a happy user experience. But if we show them, hey, things aren't working, we're going to produce, even though it's not working, we're going to produce a good user experience because they're able to know what's happening. They're able to find out, oh, this didn't work. I didn't just spend an hour creating something, turn off my browser, come back the next day just to understand that I, I was receiving errors here that I wasn't receiving and nothing saved. And now I'm very unhappy. So user experience is, is the case that you take in on how people are experiencing your app and, and kind of the journey that you give them. Um, not enough developers put a lot of focus on user experience, but this is very important. You know, people say this is like left to marketing or whatever, but um, you know, just, just, keep, just keep that in mind there also. Now, when we talk about the UI, We've already kind of been talking about that. That is everything that the person is seeing. Um, so, so this is just a document, right? But user interface, it's what the user is now interfacing with. So, so this stuff is the UI right here. All these little elements and, and things like that, the words, Anything that the user is messing with, that's considered the UI. Um, so I think that pretty much covers the gist of, of how data is stored and then accessed and requested and sent back and forth in this, in this big loop over here. Um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to uh, reach out to me and ask. You can post in the comments. I know this is um, a new series that I'm starting. I'm going to be trying to answer questions and throw up videos. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for more videos that I come across and create. And you guys have a great day.